context I want to set is the singularity, are we getting closer? More particularly, are we getting closer to understanding what the real issues are with the singularity? And what, if anything, we should be doing about it? So let's start with the definition. So what is this thing that we're talking about? And this is the nearest thing to a kind of a guidebook to the singularity. And it's got a definition right on its top cover. It says, when humans transcend biology, which is a nice catchy phrase. When humans become at least as much computer or robot as they are biological. So some of us are on the way there with glasses and laser <laughs> surgery. And later on, we might have a memory implants and then beyond. So that's one definition of the singularity, which gets on the front cover of that book. But I want to say that uh, misses out some of the real issues that we're discussing here. In fact, I only give three definitions of the singularity, and this is number one, which I'll then put to the side. What's more interesting is this notion of ever-increasing change. I've got a graph here, which I've arbitrarily picked a date 100 years, no, 50 years into the future, 2059, and the ever-increasing rate of improvement in technology. And I'm quoting here perhaps one of the smartest people from the middle of last century, John von Neumann, who is probably the first person to actually use this word singularity in terms of this ever-increasing improvement in technology. And he says, the ever-increasing, the accelerating progress of technology gives the appearance of approaching some essential singularity in this history of the race beyond which human affairs, as we know them, could not continue. And this is picked up, and uh, this theme of exponential growth is discussed at great length in many chapters of Ray Kurzweil's book that I was showing earlier on. Exponentials are strange, they're unintuitive. Many things can happen faster than you expect if there is exponential growth involved. Now here's a good example of how things can often happen much faster than you'd expect. So we start with a hard problem, a hard problem which involves a lot of uh, technology, sequencing the entire human genome. And this project was sort of started in the year 1990, and at that stage it cost about $10 of effort to sequence a single base pair of the human genome, and given that there's 3.3 billion base pairs, it's a pretty expensive and pretty long project to go through the whole human genome and uh, work out what it, how it's all put together. So some people said, gosh, this is such a big project, it's going to take a thousand years to finish. Whereas the scientists who set up the project said it might take 15 years to finish. Now, halfway through that project, how far do you think they'd got? Halfway through that period of 15 years, had they done maybe 1 billion base pairs? If you think linearly, then that's what you'd expect. But in fact, there was less than 1% finished, and people would say, well, what's happening here? You know, we're not making any progress. But in terms of the exponential curve, of uh, ever-improving technology, Faster computers, better tools. In fact, the project finished in 2003, fully two years earlier than expected. Please come in, Dean. Hello. Hiya. There are some seats. There may not be some spaces, but uh, I'll leave you to solve that problem. Hiya. Let's take the top one. So, indeed, and at the end of this project, instead of it costing $10 of effort to sequence a base pair, it was down to two cents. So in that 15 years, there was a 500-fold improvement in being able to do that. And 500-fold improvement is doubling eight times. So two times two times two times two, eight times is... So that's what can be achieved if uh, technology can continue to double in power. Just spell this out a bit more. If you take 30 steps, if you take 30 steps in kind of linear progress, then you get 30 times as far as you do with a single step. But if you have an exponential improvement, if you double each step, how far have you actually got compared to a single step after 30 steps? About a billion. About a billion. About a billion, yes? For those of you who read a bit of pseudo maths, so 2 to the power 30, 2 to the power 10 to the power 3, which is about 1,000 to the power 3, which is a billion. So that's an awful long way it can be achieved through this. So when people say, oh, you're talking about the future technology, it sounds interesting, but it's going to take 100 years to achieve that. They're often assuming that pace will continue the same as today, 
Whereas if indeed technology is doubling and then doubling and doubling in its speed, then it might be a lot less than 100 years before we achieve that. Another example, sequencing the HIV virus took 15 years from the 1980s to 2003, roughly comparable, not exactly the same, perhaps the SARS virus took only 31 days to sequence. So as the technology gets better and better in terms of more of a semiconductor power with the Moore's law, more computing power, but also in terms of the positive feedback that's in there, in terms of the fact that after you build one tool, you can use that tool to build the next tool, and then you go faster. So the first computers were designed on paper and built by hand. Then you use computers to help design the next, and then the next computer can help you to design even better ones later on. It's the same with software. Initially, software is very slow. Then you get more <coughs> software tools, such as compilers, debuggers, and so on, to let you create the software faster. And more generally, modern economy depends on so much technology which is already in place, so much people who have already learned to use the technology, so the whole thing goes faster. So that's the sort of second definition of the singularity. But I don't think that really captures the real challenge of the singularity. I'm going to come to a third definition in a minute. Because people can still say, well, you know, We've had this exponential growth in the past. How long is it going to continue? If we're going to reach the limits and for one reason or another, uh, we're going to run out of uh, spectrum. We're going to run out of the ability of Moore's law. And so I think the most important definition of the singularity is this one, in which you might get a curve that looks something like this instead. And I'm borrowing some ideas here from uh, Michael Anisimov, who's one of the people at the Singularity Institute. And he says, you might get technology sometimes improving fast and sometimes slowing down. Yeah. But what's really important David, is it comes to stage. We've got so, in this case, uh, what's happening is that eventually there's a phase change. So eventually you've gathered enough things together that suddenly there's a discontinuous change. And you get a graph that looks much more like this. So it's a bit like, well, it's a bit like you gather more nuclear material together and you spend a long time gathering, it gets bigger, and eventually you reach a phase change when there's enough nuclear material to do something catastrophic. In other words, a chain reaction takes off. And the worry is, or the challenge is, or the promise is, whatever you want to look at it, is that with a singularity, eventually there will be enough intelligence or artificial intelligence created that it can take over and a new kind of evolution happens, which is the evolution of intelligence. Uh, so to quote Michael Anisimov, when the first transhuman intelligence is created and launches itself into a curse of self-improvement, but like I was saying, you get computers improving computers, you get software improving software. If you can get to the stage that the intelligence is able to improve the intelligence better than we humans can do it, then you get this fundamental discontinuity, the likes of which we can't even begin to predict. And uh, yeah, that's the idea in a nutshell, that as soon as you get AI which is smarter than humans for sufficiently many purposes. We already have AI which is smarter than humans for playing chess, for navigating their way through complex cities, for uh, doing searches of huge amounts of data, but if you get uh, an AI which is smarter than human in a sufficient general sense, including the ability to design and build new AI, then it's going to take over, it will recursively improve faster and faster with uh, goodness knows what, and so we'll have this super, super, super human general intelligence, and we're unlikely to conceive of what will happen next. And that is the, what would happen next. Well, of course, Hollywood's got its own ideas. But, uh, but these ideas are just uh, Hollywood, and uh, this, uh, this isn't very impressive because this is only a little bit cleverer than humans. And in these films, there usually is a there usually is a human who's able to exert a superhuman effort and beat the computer. Whereas with these computers, they wouldn't just be ten percent smarter than us; they'd be a thousand times or a billion times smarter than us. And so a bad singularity outcome would be much worse. So I think that is the concept of the singularity that uh, motivated quite a few people to give up careers and go and work in the Singularity Institute. The view that this could happen, we could have this kind of a dramatic a take off of intelligence, uh, wherever it's gone, and we must be sure that we somehow are either stopping it or controlling it or guiding it so that we don't get uh, this explosion happening in a bad way. But at the Singularity Summit there are various people saying, well, is it so inevitable? You know, what is likely to drive the growth of this intelligence? And I particularly like this presentation by somebody who's described as a rock star philosopher, partly because he looks a bit like a rock star. I don't know about rock stars nowadays, but when I was young, rock stars looked a bit like this. And uh, he gave this talk and said, well, how is intelligence going to improve? You know, Do we need to worry about intelligence being able to improve itself in itself? 
It's not just a little bit, it's going to be able to do it, for this argument to stack up, it's going to be able to do it recursively and extensively. And he said the 